Hey, what's up guys? Jay's Two Cents here, bringing you another video about PC building. And this time I'm talking directly to you, the guy in the budget, the guy who's got very little money to spend and you need to get as much performance as you can out of your system without going into debt or selling plasma or selling your body on the corner. Now, if you recall, quite a while back, uh, over a year ago, I did a video about memory speed and how it affects gaming on PC. And of course, that was directed towards somebody who had a CPU and a GPU not running an APU. So today, we're gonna be taking a look at how memory speeds directly affect APU performance on AMD's Kaveri platform. Now, speaking about Kaveri, let's go ahead and talk about the specs that are in this system behind me. If you recall, I built this thing on live stream on my weekly podcast, Tech Talk with Jace Two Cents and Barnacles every single Thursday at 6 p.m. thereabouts. It's usually more like 6.05, sometimes 6.10. Anyway, it's every Thursday at six o'clock-ish. Uh, Pacific Standard Time or Daylight Time, whatever. You guys have to do the math. I'm sorry, I can't help you determine when it's on for you. The world is turning after all, and uh, I can't do anything about that. I can't stop that. <laughs> I've tried. It wasn't pretty. So anyway, enough about that. The system I'm using is an AMD A10-7850K Kaveri APU in an MSI A88X AC Mini ITX motherboard. So this isn't even like the most ideal motherboard I could be using for this test but it's kind of like a worst case scenario as far as I'm concerned. It has very little overclocking potential on this motherboard, so your results will more than likely be much better than mine. I am running 16 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz uh, R9 gaming, uh, Radeon gaming memory. It's actually an AMD branded memory with an AMD profile in there. It's a very, very aggressive RAM. It's not entirely too cheap, but then again, uh, we're going to be taking a look specifically at memory speeds and not timings and things. So we're going to see how speed affects overall gaming performance. With that said, guys, I'm also going to be benchmarking this today in Battlefield. Now, the reason why I'm using Battlefield 4 and not some of the other uh, games that are out is, one, Battlefield 4 is very intensive still in the sense that the Frostbite 3 engine is just kind of not really hardware friendly in a lot of cases. So I wanted to kind of throw as much at this APU as I possibly could rather than going with something that's a lot less uh, APU intensive or graphics intensive as something like uh, Thief or you know something along those lines. So that's why we're using Battlefield 4. If you're using playing other games that are not as intensive, your results are also going to be a heck of a lot better. Now in terms of my overclocks and stuff on this, I'm only running this at 4.3 gigahertz up from 3.7. So we're talking a 600 megahertz overclock, which isn't massive, but it's also no slouch either. Uh, part of the problem is the farther you overclock the CPU in an APU, the lesser of an overclock you can get in your GPU. Now, when it comes to GPU, I am running the internal GPU at 960 megahertz. I couldn't quite get that 1026, uh, that 1026 megahertz to be stable, uh, even at stock speeds and just bumping up the GPU, it wouldn't do over one gigahertz. So unfortunately, I can't see how well one gigahertz will actually affect the performance. But scaling, according to AMD, is really, really good as well. Now, when it comes to RAM, the first test we're gonna be doing on this is 1600 megahertz because uh, 1333, I don't think anyone should really be picking up 1333 dim sticks anymore. I mean, it's so old. 1600 or plus or go home, bro. I mean, seriously. Do you even RAM, bro? Now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and hop in the test range here in Battlefield 4. I'm not doing multiplayer uh, for this test because I wanted a static, controlled environment that we could realistically see what the changes are uh, without going to different servers that are going to have all kinds of different variables that I can't control in those servers as well. So, with that said, let's turn around and get in some Battlefield 4 and see exactly how this thing performs. Okay, so here we are inside the test range here for Battlefield 4. Now we wanna monitor the FPS, obviously, so we're gonna type, uh, we're gonna push the tilde, which is the button right next to number one. We're gonna type perf overlay draw, dot draw FPS space one. And now you can see we have our FPS up there and we're sitting at uh, 32 frames per second in the menu. Okay, now for video settings, I have uh, pretty much everything on medium with all anti-aliasing turned off. It's a custom setting. It's all medium except for the anti-aliasing turned off and I have no motion blur running. Uh, but as you can see right here, I do have the Mantle API currently loaded. So that is the way that we are doing things here in the test bench or the test thing. 
So we'll just go ahead and kind of start off here in the helicopter. You can see we're getting, what, 35 frames per second with some dips down into the 20s, some stutters, but it's, it's actually not too bad. It's actually fairly smooth. I'll just come over here and I'll attack this guy, make some explosions. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do a U-turn in my little chopper dopper. We're gonna attack that tank once again with a uh, surface to air to surface missile. We're gonna blow him up. All right, so we see we dip down into the mid 20s, but we're averaging right around 35 to 30 frames per second. And overall, though, it's smooth. I mean, that's the thing. It's still fairly consistent. You can see up there, it's just fluctuating five FPS at the most. There's not, you know, there's nothing really to complain about. It, I could play with this. That's the thing. I could play with these settings. But all right, 1600 uh, memory there. We got that now tested, and we're going to go ahead and do the same little loop I just did with uh, 1,866 and see if we got any improvements. Okay, so now we're back in the test uh, range here and you can see by bumping it up from 1,600 to 1,866, our averages have jumped from the mid 30s to the low 40s just by bumping it up, uh, what, 266 megahertz on the RAM. And this RAM is capable all the way up to 2,400 megahertz. So let's go ahead and do our little loop again. Come over here and we'll attack the tank. Put some bullets into him. Come over here and do our little loop. You can see we're chilling here still in the mid mid 40s on average now. Or low, high 30s, mid 40s. Let's blow this guy up. And then uh, we'll come over here and we'll do we'll do some trick flying. Whee! Okay, so I mean, already we're going up to high 30s, low 40s. So instead of just doing now 2100, I'm gonna jump straight to 2400 RPM. RPM, this is an engine now apparently. It is kind of an engine technically, the API engine. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and jump straight into 2400 megahertz and see exactly what we're getting here in uh, Battlefield 4 test bench, test rig, this thing, that, whatever. Okay, so here we are back in the test range now and as you can see, we're getting, uh, it's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but mid 40s, low 40s, high 30s every now and then. We'll go ahead and hop, oh, I'll show you here that the uh, settings are still all the same, all medium. Uh, it's all exactly the same as it was before. We'll go ahead and hop in our little bird here and do our same little, our little looping run we were doing. We'll go ahead and kill this infidel tank here. Get some rounds in it. Come over here and do our little loop. I saw a 27 for a second there. Oh, there's a 51, that was cool. Oh, turn too far. Go ahead and make an explosion. And you can see we're sitting here pretty much in the mid mid 40s to upper 40s. Oh, there's a 50. Pretty much because I got out over the uh, over the water there. But I just want to. I mean, you have to admit that the performance of an APU like Kaveri is is it's not bad, it's really not. Okay, so why are we doing all this today? Well, it's just to show you guys that without a graphics card, I am playing a game like Battlefield 4 near refresh rate of the monitor, I mean mid 40s. This, this is awesome right here. Now, I was expecting maybe a little bit more out of the 2400 megahertz RAM than, uh, than we're getting here. You can see there was a little bit of diminishing returns. Um, 2100 was actually about the same. But this, this, is, this is absolutely phenomenal in terms of the fact that we're, we don't have a graphics card and we are playing Battlefield 4 at playable play rates. This is, this is cool. I mean, when I did my Kaveri video last year, I only had 1600 megahertz RAM, so I didn't get to take full advantage of it. But this, this is absolutely phenomenal in terms of how playable it is. Now there's one more thing I want to show you here. And hopefully the video can actually pick up how smooth this actually is, considering it's it's lesser than the frame rate or the fresh refresh rate of the monitor. But now it it got me to thinking. Most people who are gonna be building on an extreme budget like this are more than likely going to have extreme budgets on monitors and displays and things like that. In fact, I know some people, Coconut Monkey, who are still playing on a 720p monitor. So I got to thinking. 
if you're on an extreme budget, you have no graphics card, you only have three, four hundred dollars to spend on an entire system. I mean, this this chip right here is available for what about one hundred and seventy dollars, and it gives you a CPU, a quad core CPU, as well as an APU or a GPU internally that can play a game like this at sustainable play rates. What happens if you do it on a lesser resolution than 1080p, like I'm doing here? And when I did that, uh, I needless to say, I nearly shit a brick because of how well it actually performed. So we are go ahead and stick this at 720p right here. Now it's gonna kinda look like poop on a 1080p native resolution monitor, but at 720p, it, it, looks, it looks like a 1080p when it's a native resolution. But look, look at the frame rates. We're talking 80s, and now this is just as smooth as playing on any actual gaming PC. You know, a PC that's, that's built specifically for gaming. This is, this is awesome. I mean, look at this. We, we are sitting up in the 60s at like pretty much all times here. All right, so we'll just kind of let the helicopter fall out of the sky here. Now, what's the point of this? If you were on an extreme budget, Kaveri APU coupled with some fast RAM without a GPU is by far the most cost-effective way to start getting into PC gaming. I highly recommend Kaveri. Why is it still flying? I thought, didn't we crash? Anyway, I highly, highly recommend Kaveri A10 7850K. I don't have an A8 or an A6, so I can't really attest to those, but I can tell you that the A10 7850K right here with some 2400 megahertz RAM is one hell of a shocker when it comes to playing games. So if I loaded up something like Titanfall, this thing would be sitting at 60 frames per second with no problem because Titanfall is so undemanding. So there you go, guys. Jace 2 cents here bringing you a video about Kaveri, memory speeds, APUs, and I'm telling you right now, if you were on a strict budget, this needs to be on your short list. So guys, I'm gonna get the heck on out of here. Hope you guys will follow on Twitter. I enjoy interacting with you guys. And um, Facebook, if you're not into the Twitter and then Instagram and all that stuff, I like to just kind of do some silly things but uh, whatever the case may be guys i will see you in the next one and thanks for hanging out today checking out kaveri apu damn this thing is pretty cool ram you have to overclock the cpu and the best speeds of my processor right now just happen to be making for some really unconventional ram speeds but this video is going to give you an idea of what to expect now rather than use a live game like battlefield